you have to like truly love what you're doing and it has to get to the point where um one of the most important steps is where eventually studying and reviewing no longer feels like work and it just becomes something that you're naturally have a desire to do and it becomes muscle memory hey what is up everybody welcome back to the next gen traders youtube channel you're watching episode six as you can see there's only three of us lance alex and sam um, we're going to get into a little OTC list in market conditions, have a little open discussion, go over our trades and, um, go into our current plans for the week. So, um, since there's only three of us, this episode might be a little bit shorter than the previous episodes, but there's going to be some really good content in here for you guys to take away from. So, uh, to get us started, we are just going to talk about how our week's going really quick. So whoever wants to start with that can go right ahead. So, oh, yeah. Uh... Sam, you want to start or Alex? Yeah, my week. Uh, this week I moved again to a different place. Uh, same time zone. Yeah, so still I kind of got used to the time zone. Yeah, just still spending more time outside the market because as we'll, we will talk about, nothing special happens <laughs> is happening there. So yeah, just uh, patiently waiting for the opportunities. Don't, uh, not forcing anything. Yeah, just doing the same thing every week until the market hits up. Awesome. Well, uh, yeah, I'll go next. Um, this week I have made the most trades I've ever made in a week. So that's not good or bad particularly. I'm focused on trading well. I'm not focused on meeting a, uh, a trade quota, but, um, yeah, I'm just trying to keep studying, keep reviewing. And I feel like the more I study, like the happier I get, cause I feel like I'm learning more and more and more. And I always just can't wait to apply it the next week. Like I can't wait for tomorrow. Um, so just like the more I study, like the better I feel. So uh, just trying to improve and get better every day. So uh, Sam, go right ahead. Yeah. So um, this week, I I did a little better without like with stopping over trading because there for a week. I mean, you guys knew that I was just making so many trades every day. Um, I try to just sit back and just wait and wait for the setups to come to me. And if I see them, you know, I can I can trade them. Uh, I made a couple of trades, but I didn't over trade and, and I'm happy about that. So good. Awesome. That's great to hear. Yeah. All right, Alex. Yeah. You want to talk about OTCs? Yeah. So uh, this week in OTCs, uh, this week was the definition of the summer trading. Uh, there were a few solid runners just in the beginning of the week, but then like off, like on Wednesday, everything just slowed down and nothing really interesting was happening. In this market, it's better to take a single and then just patiently wait for the, for the next one while keeping your profits and not giving it up again. It's better to not force anything because the, the, all, all the patterns are not there like every day. Like maybe two, three a week. No, no, no. It's, it's not like two, three a day like it used to be. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, well, I'm going to talk about listed market. The listed market lately has been really freaking hot. This week, there have been a ton of runners from Newegg to Carve to SGOC on Friday. Um, quite a few more short traps lately than there have normally been. Uh, too bad Sander, Xander or Sam couldn't talk about um, their trades this week. They're not here. But um, yeah, the listed market has been super hot. Tons of runners. A uh, lot of volume, a lot of volume co compared to the past few weeks, the past few months. So uh, just going to react to see uh, what stays hot for this current week. So uh, that's really all I got for the uh, listed market. And um, so now let's just get into our trades this week. Alex is going to go first, then I'll go after him, and then Sam will go next. So uh, Alex, you want to start us off? So uh, this week I made only one trade, just one. Uh, and it was on... NLSG. So this was a huge runner. And one thing I spotted about this, it was very, it is still very similar to LWLG, as you all know that. So if you, if you go to the daily, so right here, if you compare these candles, so see how we had the first move, then we have the red, red candle, and then another push, then here's here we had two candles, but here we had the same, the one, and then just one big wick here. So almost the same thing. And then it rebroke out. I remember I was watching LWLG here and I remember saying the like breakout 450, but 
it wasn't that clear, so I I did not play anything here. But on this one, I tried playing it, and uh, let me show you on the intraday. It didn't have uh, any news, just just technical play here. So as we can see on eighth, yeah, here it uh, it had a big morning move. So this actually uh, this press action did not care. I cared about uh, near the close because this I only looked at the daily chart and the big picture, and also this was a higher price, so it was like kind of slow mover. So. I was watching it near the close and I did, did not have the best Wi-Fi. So I just wanted to wait for the best time to buy. So in case it, like the Wi-Fi crashes are still good. So I was watching it uh, uh, about somewhere here, the uh, 579. And I remember asking someone and uh, they said like, you can buy right, right now if you're willing to risk failure because the win rate here wasn't that good. And since I'm under the PDT and I don't have a lot of cash, so I said, I better wait for the confirmation. So the confirmation would have been break of uh, 580, yeah, 585 and then the dip, or just buy, as I did, right in, in the close for the potential move as LWLG did. So I bought it right into the close at 576. And the next morning we actually had some gap up, as you can see. A very, very little one. And near the open, my risk was on the red green. So my, my risk was somewhere here, here. And you, you can see how I held through all this. And then I cut immediately when I saw the weakness and I knew it was gonna break out. And I remember uh, in the breakdown, breakdown, breakouts, breakdown chat, I said like, I hate how it faked out like had this fake out and then just reclaimed and had the, the like just the consolidation. So if, if this didn't happen, I would have held. And someone said like, you have to control your emotions. And I was like, I'm not re regretting this trade like, because if I held through this and then I reclaimed and I was still in, I wouldn't be happy because then I broke my plan. You know, 10, like nine out of 10 times, you can break your risk and then, and the risk was red green. So that was a significant line. So I'm not regretting my, exit just disappointing how it just dumped here like maybe just one seller right i don't know what happened here and then it uh it's still a good play so it possibly is gonna gap up the next day and do the LWLG wow move yeah like this so and also we can see how lwlg also the next day had this consolidation day so i was kind of ready but you know just broke my risk so not regret, regretting my exit, just followed my plan, just didn't work out. Uh, so yeah, basically that was my only trade because some of the days I wasn't even watching the market. So yeah, that actually was a loss, but since I, like, if not counting commissions, that was a, like a uh, $1 profit. <laughs> so still, still a hey, good thing that you can- a dollar. It's still good that you can exit. Like if the play doesn't work out, you can exit for a small profit. So yeah. yeah, definitely. And Alex, I really like how you were lining this up with LWLG. Mm -hmm, we were yeah. talking about this over last week and how similar LWLG looks to NLST. And the fact that the quote comes in here, uh, history doesn't repeat, but it mm -hmm. rhymes. That's it right here. So, uh, so yeah. You got anything else, Alex? Nope. That's all. All right. So uh, I'm going to go next. I made four trades this week and I'm going to share my screen screen quick here. All right. So I should be sharing my screen. Can you guys see my trade review up here? Yes. Yep. Okay. So my first trade on the week was on Blinn. This was on Wednesday. Um, so I have been fo trying to focus more at least over the second part of this week on entering on higher lows under VWAP to look for the VWAP reclaim later. But as of right now, I'm not super comfortable buying under VWAP because I've seen so many higher lows just stuff and then keep going under VWAP. So I'm not super comfortable on those yet. I wish I could pull up VWAP on this trade review chart. I don't know how to do that. Maybe I'll figure that out soon. But um, VWAP was right like under my entry at 9.2. 
I was uh, looking for a break over this line. As you can see, the move came later up into the 9.8, but I ended up entering here. And um, this stock was, again, super choppy. This is the second time I've traded Blinn in the, um, I traded it last week also. So um, I got in here, I, I didn't, don't know what my actual execution price was. I was in right here at 916. I was out at 924, just a really small scalp-like play because I did not like how choppy this price action was here. Um, so yeah, that was my first trade. That one was just super quick. I'm not gonna take too long, just a really small gain. And then my second trade was on U1. And this was on Thursday. And I piked the crap out of this stock. Um, my, I was looking for the uh, dip and rip right here with confirmation of a VWAP reclaim early in the day that was right here. This is the morning and pre-market when U1 and Carve were starting to get super, super hot. So I entered here right over VWAP. And honestly, I cannot tell. I have zero excuse for why I exited in this little pullback right here. For some freaking reason, I got scared out right here. There's absolutely no excuse for that to happen. All I needed to do was stick to my risk level, and then I would have been in for a I, I don't even want to hypothesize anything, but um bottom line is no matter what about the PL, I did not trade this well at all. Um I let a random little pullback get me out which has been a problem for me lately, but I've been uh, refining my setup so that this doesn't happen. So I'm excited for this week. But um, so yeah, as you can see, I was in at 897 and out at 912. So just, this was another small gain, like $6 and change. Um, and yeah, I, I traded this really, really badly. Um, and yeah, so I'm gonna focus on not doing this anymore going to focus on holding through the pullback, sticking to my risk level and waiting for that confirmation. So there's my uh, trade on U1. Lance, what was your, uh, just curious to what your risk level was on UNE right there? Um, I was risking uh, this level right here, the previous high right here at like 860. Okay. okay. So like the breakout level, like the high day breakout? Yeah, the high day right here. Okay. So oh, yeah. The reason why oh, Sam uh, asks is because he, he wants to know why you sold there if you had the risk, you know, like if you had the risk below. No, that, that's the that's the point. I didn't follow. Uh, I didn't follow my risk level on that one. Did you like? I uh, I had a stop loss and I took my stop loss out, and I I don't know. It was just not a good trade at all. So. Okay, I will add uh, to, to this trade. Uh, uh, it's it's the pattern that uh, Bryce Tui he likes it, and also I know. Tim Britani and the reversal long. I mean, it's not a perfect setup, but you see, like, uh, you have like the first high now on the uh, on the intro that you had the first high, and then like five minutes of consolidation, then the break. So they like to buy right at the, this break and then risk it all day. So th this is one of my, right. one of the patterns that I that I'm learning. Yeah. On the mm -hmm. recent runners. Yeah. Yeah. So you can play two yep. patterns here, like buy the high, the break, and then. So maybe at the view up and then play your pattern there. Right. Yeah. Um, the optimal entry, like the full like dip and rip would yeah, be yeah. buying at the break of the hod. But for me, it also got me confirmation of the V the reclaim right here. So it was kind of yeah. like a two in one. So I just decided to enter a little bit later, yeah. but yeah, this, I did not trade this well at all. And next week I'm definitely going to fix those mistakes. So do you guys any, have anything else to add? I'm going to move on to the next really quick. I'm going to move on to ARPO really quick. This was another small winner. Um, in at 276, out at 282. That's the daily. The uh, intraday on this view app was right here. I entered on the reclaim when it was strong. As you can see, the volume was ramping up. So I got in right here. Um, after this, like, wick candle right here, I saw weakness. Again, I need to stick to my stop loss, whether it gives me that confirmation or not. I'm my main mistake lately has been moving my hard stop up way, way, way too early lately. I actually would have rather had this trade. Um, I mean, this one that got me out right here at 275, I was risking this low right here at 268 or whatever. So, um, so yeah, that was my risk. Um, I would have rather had this honestly get me out at my stop loss right here 
instead of um, instead of me have this small game because I'm focused on trading well, not about the PNL. But um, I mean, I took this little small gainer after this wick candle right here. Again, I've been looking at higher lows lately and optimal entry. See, there was a dip and then a higher low right here. The optimal entry would have been to get in right here at about 270, get out here in the 290s, 295s. But um, I'm still experimenting with uh, higher lows under VWAP. I would prefer a higher low over VWAP, but as you can see, that didn't really happen until later. So the so VWAP was hovering around here in like 275, 280-ish. So the optimal entry would be here, the higher low here. I was just a little bit early on it. And then another one, and then to sell up into here into this spike, so I was just a little bit early. That's been a common theme for me. I've been too early on plays. So I need to wait for the exact confirmation that I'm looking for. So this was just a, a, a small gainer. And um, yeah, my main focus is just to keep my stop loss in check. So this was just another small gain. And then um, Galt was my last trade. And I am completely disappointed in myself. This was completely out of my personality to make this trade. I was predicting instead of reacting. I was looking for something that wasn't there. Um, just all the lessons that I constantly try to reinforce to myself was um, applied here. Um, yeah, I, I predicted the move. I didn't react to the move. I was in at, uh, let's see, yeah, 406, and I was out in the 398, 399-ish. So bottom line, so actually this was over view app. This was under view app right here. And this was a view app like right at my entry. And I, I have no excuse to be doing this. This, this trade was not good at all. I mean, good thing I still had my stop loss in place. It was only a small loss, $8.31. But um, again, I'm not focused on the PNL. I'm focused on trading well. And this was completely not it. This was out of my personality. And actually I'm thankful for this trade because this was the first, this was the best time for this to happen to me after five green trades in a row. The best time for a crappy trade and a loss to happen is after that fifth trade. So, um, so yeah, I, I'm not going to dwell on this trade and say like, Oh, I should have done this. I should have done this. I'm using it as a positive to help propel me to next week and know exactly what not to do and that I know not to do this again. So, um, so yeah, that was all of my trades for this week. And then I just have a couple notes that I have. So I am going to come back to the Zoom and I'm gonna stop my screen. All right, so I'm back. And then I just have a couple of notes. So the trading selection is very, very important. Something that I'm focusing on. I might see a bunch of setups happening in front of my face, but selecting the right ones, knowing that I can only with my current account size and my current position size, I can only make um, three trades with my account size based on my position size. So, um, so yeah, trade selection is definitely key. Again, reacting, not predicting. On JALT, I completely predicted. I was uh, looking for a move in advance that wasn't there. So, um, yeah, that's something I can never do. And I can't let a small period of choppy price action uh, get me out. I have to stick to my risk, stick to my hard stop, wait for that confirmation. And uh, once I do that, I'm going to do that this week. Um, this week was kind of just like getting my feet wet, trying to figure out what I do like and what I don't. I'm still in that phase. Um, so yeah. And then for one more thing, I just wanted to add, and then Sam's going to get into his trades. But um, so for learning traders, this is like a couple things that have been critical, like for me, that um, you have to truly like love the game of trading and its process. Nothing can be forced. You can't have anyone be like, you have to sit down, you have to study, you have to do this, you have to do this. You have to like truly love what you're doing. And it has to get to the point where um, one of the most important steps is where eventually studying and reviewing no longer feels like work. And it just becomes something that you're naturally have a desire to do. And it becomes muscle memory. Once you get to the point where, so in the beginning, you're studying, you're like, all right, I got to sit down. I got to study. Once you start doing it enough and you start learning more and more and more, it eventually just becomes like part of your day. It eventually just becomes, all right, study time, like part of your day. 
and you don't even think twice about it. And then you got some really good study time in and you're like, oh yeah, that's awesome. I didn't even have to like go sit down at my computer and say, all right, time to study. It was just something that's muscle memory for you. And to help out with that, forming a routine to keep yourself accountable is, um, is something that's going to really, really help you with that. And, um, to get your studying in check and get it to a point where it becomes natural to you. So that was just my notes. Uh, Sam's going to get into his trades. So uh, Sam, go right ahead. Yeah. And Lance, I really like what you're saying there because like you're like, you're making these beginning trades and you're, and you're feeling out the market and what you want to trade. And, and you had five, you know, green trades and one loss and you cut that one loss quick and realized and realized that you were wrong on it. And that you didn't just, you know, bag, hold, hold and hope. And I wanted to come back, but I really like what you're doing there. Um, yeah, so, thank you, man. Appreciate it. So I'm going to share my screen here. Okay, so I should be uh, sharing my screen. Yep, you can see it. Um, so this is um, – with work, I was really busy, and I missed last week's episode. But uh, I traded MDMP and uh, OTC for a screen day. It, it's a textbook setup. And um, here's the entry day. So I had this really long consolidation from 11 o'clock to uh, 2 o'clock. And this was just a perfect entry. I, get in, I got in at uh, 0.163 and uh, risking off like 16 cents or just a little bit below. And, uh, and we got this nice little push up the high day and it started getting choppy. And I was like, I really just, I just want to get out because I have a profit and the market has been super fast and, uh, and I was up 13%, I think. So I got out, that was a nice $200 profit. And, uh, and then it just, it just ripped again. And uh, I, I, I wish I could have gotten a part of that, but, but I'm happy. I'm not going to turn down a 13% gain. Uh, well, I wanna add, and so, so I was really happy with that trade. In the last, in the last episode, I talked about how you entered there and I had the question of, why were you watching that consolidation going ahead with almost zero volume? Like uh, for, I was like watching for, this, frankly, yeah. be, because oh. there was really not, nothing else yeah, that yeah, I, see. I was potentially going <laughs> mm-hmm. to play. Mm-hmm. I, I, I just like these after setups. This is, this is my bread and butter. Uh, and so, like, whenever I was watching it, I was watching it for a long time, and it had this just no volume downtrend, and then it got down here, and there's, like, virtually one bidder and a few small sellers, and they were just not, not doing anything. And, uh, and then we got this little volume perk down here, and, uh, and it perked up, and that, that was just a – I just recognized it and got in. And uh, the most Yeah, important, Sam. Sorry, Alex. Go ahead. The most important thing, it was above the view up. Because that meant it's it's still strong, kind of strong. Yeah. Yeah, and what surprised me was, like, it finished really strong. Yes. And it it gapped down and had yeah. a huge red day. I did not see that coming at all. That's what we're talking about here. Yeah. The first minute is ordered, it just don't work. Yeah, that's the current market, this one, man. This They're one also just has, holding overnight to yeah. not the move. I don't remember if it had news, but still it was perfect setup, perfect close, everything. Yeah. Just, yeah, I don't remember uh, either. Uh, Sam, can you go back to the intraday for a sec? Yeah. Okay, so uh, as Alex said, uh, the fact that it held above VWAP was very, very important. If it got below VWAP and cracked, it would have been a no trade. But can you just zoom in a tiny bit yeah. more? Okay, perfect. So yeah. do you see how from like, so how at like 11, there was like a dip before and a dip mm-hmm. after, and there's mm-hmm. that consolidation in the middle? that's basically at the same point as the consolidation later in the day that you bought after. So that kind of sets like if you drew a line right there, then your entry would match up perfectly with that consolidation right here at like 11 mm-hmm. and past 11 AM. And that lines up perfectly. So the fact that you saw the volume ramp come in after there was a perfect line set right there, dude, it's, you executed this perfectly. And I mean, you could say, I wish I would have held longer. I wish I would have held above these higher lows just because it kept bouncing off of its previous support. But the point that you buy and the point that you sell is your main focus. And for a lot of the main traders that we watch, the turning point in their careers were when they started to not care about how much a stock ran after they got out of it. 
because the more that they dwelled on how much they could have made versus how much they did make, it ended up being bad for them in the long run. So the point when they found out like, hey, I no longer care about what the stock does after I exit. I only care about my execution. That's what changed the turning point for them. But yeah, dude, this execution was amazing. Uh, I can't wait to see you nail another one of these. So yeah. No, oh, thank you. Thank you. I like the thing, my favorite part about this trade was just the risk reward was so good because I could, I could risk this consolidation right in here and VWAP was on my side because it was above VWAP and it had been consolidating all day long. And so I was really yeah. like less than 1%. So yeah, I like that trade. Um, yeah, that's perfect. Second trade, mm -hmm. second trade was from uh, this week. Uh, it was on NOKPF. I'm a weird ticker. I didn't know you. Uh, I didn't know you traded this. I was looking at this all week. I did. Um, it had this big morning push, and I was watching it consolidate. And then right here, I bought this breakout, and it had a, a volume spike that was just as big as the volume it was trading in the morning. And um, and I just completely like it just baited me into it, and I was in at uh, like fifteen one point fifteen one, and uh, I sold right here right before this little crack and made like two okay. dollars. But okay, uh, looking back, I could have risked off of fourteen. Um, okay, I could have risked off of a level down here, and I would have held. But then I was thinking about, do I want to hold through this downtrend? Because I don't know that it's going to spike up late day. Now, now, now this is a good first green day. It broke out in the afternoon. But um, this one, it was, it was just kind of choppy. It, it wasn't perfect, but I tried it, and it was, a, it was a scratch trade, so I'm okay with it. Yeah, I mean, Sam, um, I'm going to add something really quick. So you see how 14 cents ends up becoming the main uh, support <laughs> level? If you, if you wanted to hold it all day, 14 cents would be way too wide of a risk to be able to risk 14 cents because if you bought it 15.1 and you were risking 14, what is that, like 7% risk? It, it would have been like a $75 loss and I, and I didn't want to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, you, you don't want to do that, obviously. But I mean, it's a good thing you got out for a scratch right there, even though 14... I mean, I, I like this entry. Where was VWAP on this, actually? Um, let me put it up here. Okay. So it was, it was right in here. Um, but, like, I bought on this breakout, and I was thinking, like, the risk level is going to have to be wide, or I could just go off if, if it's holding the breakout or not. So whenever I saw it was cracking up, it probably isn't going to hold the breakout, so I just got it out. As nice. I always Better. say, you know why I failed? Like the break why it did not spike I, like 17. It, I mean, it didn't spike. There was it just the volume dried up as soon as it broke out. I know, but it's because of the time of the day. Oh, midday. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It was a midday trade. Um, that was another thing I didn't like about it. It wasn't perfect at all. But... um. And in, in no, I mean, a really hot market, midday, you can go for these. I probably shouldn't have if went for yeah, this. Of course, in the, in yeah, this market. of course. In the hot market, every, every perk, yeah, it's just a good bench. Midday can sometimes be really hard to interpret because WSRC, when it started its huge run, a couple of those days, midday was when it had its massive high day breaks and spikes. So you really you just never know. It's kind of just like an undetermined territory where yeah, when, your risk reward is high just because it's midday. And you don't have an yeah. edge there, as you do in the power hour on the, or in the morning. Mm -hmm. Sam, did you um wait? Can you go back to the chart really quick? Yeah. Sorry. So, did you keep watching this stock for the rest of the day? Um, as soon as as soon as it had a weak breakout and cracked, and um and the volume dried up, I just like threw my hands up at it and I I didn't watch it. Okay. All right. Because so you see how like in between two and three, it had that bottom and then in between three and four and power hour, it had that same bottom. Yeah. Um, so you see how the volume starts ramping up close to the, to the close. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you were still watching this, who knows, you might've seen that double bottom and got in when the volume started ramping up and then 
that out right before the close if you kept watching it. So that's just something like you never know, like when a stock, if it's not done, you don't know if it's not done. I've done that so many times. Like I've made a trade on a stock and I've just left it. And then it ends up doing my move later in the day. So. Yeah, that's true. You kind of, you kind of have a battle of two minds that's right there because in, in one way of thinking, I don't want to revenge trade this. And if I lost in the ticker, you know, I don't want to just get mad and keep on taking stabs at it. But then you don't want to just give up on a potential trade where, you know, it's bottoming out above view app in the afternoon. You know, there's there's a lot of possibility for some upside there. But yeah, yeah I think it just, it just all comes with experience. I, I think this comes with well, experience. One thing I want to add is that uh, I think the reason why I spiked here is because it was just uh, later ch late day chasers because this was a big runner. I, I think because on, based on the daily, it was a three day runner, right? And then just let day that everybody's gonna buy. Was it on the yeah? Which which day was the your trade? Was it the last day? My trade was on the ninth. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah see the big yeah. So you just back because all the rounds. Who, who knows what this is gonna do on Monday? Yes, it's very interesting. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, part of me part of me wishes I would have bought the afternoon breakout hold overnight to the weekend has a huge volume day. But one thing I don't like about it, like, yeah, it's a former runner, but it's just, I mean, this is a definition of a pump. The and volume. Up. It's down there's, so there's, much. there's no volume there, Look, There's no volume on the, pre, like, on the bigger oh, yeah. Sure. yeah, I don't know how I mean, it's that ugly chart. I don't know either. Trades, but uh, I guess now we can get into some open discussion, Alex. And Lance. Yeah, we're just going to get into some open discussion. Whoever wants to start us off can go right ahead, and we're just going to see what comes up in our conversation. So, uh, yeah, anybody want to start? start? Yeah, I want to talk about your Lance, your trade on your last trade on uh, GL GALT. So I think the reason why, uh, so you got in before the VWAP, right? So you kind of predicted, but also the I got in right at VWAP. Yeah, yeah. The, also it was because like in the chat we're all talk, talking about it, like your like yeah, you're saying like it's gonna go like yeah. So you just I think got influenced by that a little bit. I also used to that like on the alerts when I saw like for example Jack Kellogg he bought something. I think there was one time when when I also bought like not just followed but still I yeah. bought because he bought and it didn't work out. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the reasons. Yeah, following alerts can be super tricky. But yeah, I was I wanted to say something about that because. The fact that I was seeing the ticker all over the place, it had quite a bit of hype at the time. We were yeah, talking hi. about it in the chat. I freaking, I said in the chat, I'm going to wait for a reclaim here. Mm -hmm. And I was predicting a move, not reacting to the price action. And that was, it was out of personality for me. Something I never do, never will do, won't do again. Always have to react, never predict. But yeah, the fact that we were talking about it in the chat and the fact that I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to enter a reclaim here that really got in my head. And I was like, okay, I got to look for a reclaim here mm -hmm. when it wasn't there. So yeah. Thanks for adding that, Alex. And uh, also you got stopped out because of the like small fluctuations, right? Press action. Like, and it was, it was also the thing that I learned from Tim Brittany. And I always like when I enter a trade, it's always in my mind, this quote, like don't let small fluctuations get you out of the trade. And I think it only happened once, like when I remember that trade, when, when I drew the trend line and it broke that line. So that was the only time I always just try to focus on the bigger picture. I don't care about this little moose. And especially in the listed stocks, there's always this choppy price action. So you, you have to just get used, used to it and just stick to the risk. And it's good that you you took you took this little trades. And now for the next week, you, you're going to know that you have to like stick to a risk very strictly and just follow it then. Yeah. Right, yeah, I'm, I'm so glad I actually made, even even though I, I traded GALT really bad, I feel like it's something that I needed to mm -hmm. do to know exactly what not to do and kind of reinforce my own lessons that I've been uh, learning to myself. And like you said, um, that's something else that I need to really like drill into my head. It's something that I think about, but I just, this can apply to like all of us that, a stock is never going to run perfectly after you get in ever. I mean, okay. Well, sometimes it happens. Okay. Not never, not <laughs> never. Sometimes you'll enter and it'll be 25 green candles and you'll yeah, get, make a hundred percent. 
whatever, whatever. That's best case scenario, something that never happened. But this is the stock market. This is a game, or not a game, obviously. This is an area of supply and demand and algos and all that crap. So the fact that I'm looking for something to be perfect in an area that it's never going to happen and there's always going to be choppiness, like, like, duh. Like, I don't know why that completely exited my head as I'm like in the trade. I can, I told it to myself so many times. And then once I enter out of my mind, like, no, that can't happen. And, and on top of that, these listed stocks, like there's, there's good volatility and there's some good runners, but they are so crowded mm -hmm. and there's so many chat rooms and pumps and algorithms and, and hedge funds for that matter, you know, exiting the shorts. Um, just be careful. Like I prefer OTCs. They're just, they're, they're usually yeah. cleaner and they're kind of simple. Um, listed stocks, they can get wild. They can be very wild as we saw from NEGG. No, like I, I love OTCs. Don't get me wrong, but like, I don't know. I've been branching out. Yeah. Um, I haven't really found my edge in the current OTC state of the market um, until the market gets a little bit hotter I'll maybe I'll, I'll like find my edge more, but in the current market, I wanted to branch out, branch on a listed stocks. And Sam, like you said, these listed stocks, if there's anything that I've learned from the difference between trading OTCs and trading listed stocks is that these listed stocks, they're one minute candles, wick up and down way faster than OTCs do. Like you said, OTCs are slower. They're easier to follow. The level two is good. Listed, you can't look at level two. It doesn't show anything. It shows basically nothing in terms of like turns and like where the price action is going to go and all that. Level two doesn't really do anything. It's mostly the tape and it's all the chart. It's just changing, like adjusting to the volatility. And like you said, how OTCs are like slower movers and makes it easier to adjust to like see the price action. I mean, I agree with you, but um, yeah, that's just what I wanted to add. Yeah, I want to mm -hmm. add that. So as you said that you don't get the perfect moves right away, the 100%, the 20, 25 green candles. And I know from Ron Wolf, he actually, so he calls this, when there's 25 green candles in a row, he calls it unhealthy press action. And the healthy press action, oh, yeah. when it's, it's like this. So uh, you can say that's listed pattern. You know, when you, when you have the breakout, then it's chops around, then another breakout chops around, another breakout you look at the bigger picture. So you just have to look at the bigger picture. And yeah, that's listed. That's why right now I'm still on the OGCs, but I'm still keeping an eye on some of the patterns, and trying to get used to this crazy volatility. No, yeah, definitely. But yeah, Alex, uh, I like that you're saying that, like how you're, you're still focusing on OGCs and that's what works for you. That's like the mm -hmm. difference with trading. There's no like one right way to trade for everybody out there who's like, I have to trade exactly like this person. I have to follow exactly what this person's doing. Like there's no like one right way to trade. As long as you find a process that works for you, sky's the limit. Like, like seriously, just find what you like. And, um, and yeah, that, that's really all you need to do is find one setup that you get really, really good at that can help you become consistently profitable in the long run. And once you, once you hit that point, it's just like, and once you learn how to manage risk and do that, you're, you're golden. So, hundred percent. So yeah. Um, anybody got anything else, or do we want to move into our uh, plans for the week? Yeah. Yeah, we can move. No, I, I, I think we, I think we're good. So. Yeah, I think week, we got a lot I'm covered. Just sit back and and I'm gonna be a, a retired trader, and I'm just gonna. Mm -hmm not look for so many plays because that, that, that was a problem for me. Um, just watching watching the multi-day breakouts and watching the afternoon breakouts and morning panics, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, yeah. same thing for me. Uh, but I'll say, not to retard it, I'll say I'll be, I'll be looking to trade like a sniper. Like Tim Sachs always says, just sit around, like keep all your profits or just not profits, and just keep, keep your money and only shoot when you see something moving. Just not forcing anything, as I mm -hmm. always say. Uh, also, uh, I don't have any specific stocks. I just have a few ones for the past week. Nothing special. Slow market continues, because right now it's like the summer, summer, summertime. So, yeah. 
yeah, definitely. Same here. Um, I don't, I haven't made my watch list. I don't have any specific stocks. Like Alex said, I'm going to be focusing on some of the runners from last week, but, um, for me, my main, my main plans for the week, uh, obviously reiterate, reiterate, react, never predict, uh, trade selection is very important. Um, don't let small choppy price action scare me out. Focus on the big picture of the move. Um, yeah, stick to my risk level and don't move my stop loss too early. That is something that has been way, really, really bad for me. I'll get in, I'll set my stop loss. And once I see it doing anything, I'll start moving my stop loss around and it'll show like eight different, um, eight different ent or not entries, eight different things under my order status in E-Trade Pro. And I'm like scrolling up and down mm -hmm. my order status, trying to like find stuff. And I'm like, dude, I don't need all these canceled, rejected stop losses in my order status bar. So I just need to focus on holding my stop loss longer. If it gives me confirmation that the trade's going to work, great. I'll hold it and get out of my profit goal. If it gives me, um, if it dumps on me and gets me out of my stop loss, fantastic. I traded well and I stuck to my risk. So yeah, just focusing on not letting that small choppy price action get me out. That's what I'm focused on for uh, this week. Good point. Good point. All right. If, if, if that sums it up, I think we're going to come to an end here. Yeah. You guys got anything else? I'm good. Nope. A little shorter episode um, today because we have only right, two well, to show us. Yeah. Yeah, a little shorter, only three of us. So uh Sam, take us out. Yep. All right. Well, thanks for watching everybody. We hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you're not subscribed, subscribe already. Uh we're gonna be here every week. So uh, we'll see y'all next week for another episode of Next Gen Traders. Awesome. Yeah. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next episode. And uh we hope you guys got something from this video. Uh, we'll be here every single week with a new video and soon we're going to start adding, we're going to start thinking of adding some little sub videos to complement our weekend episode. So we're experimenting with that. So, uh, yeah, with all that being said, uh, we'll see you guys, uh, next week for the next episode. Yeah. All right. Cheers, guys.